Hello and welcome back to another episode of Critical Reactions with your host Brian. We're going to check out something really interesting today. I was reached out to by an artist by the name of Down Up Right. They created a 60 minute song with 60 genres and each genre taking up 60 seconds. One minute per style, 60 styles, one hour. There's also 50 collaborators on the album as well, and looking at the spreadsheet of all of the lists, sorry, looking at the spreadsheet of all the genres, there are quite a bit in here. We have classical, we have ballads, we have a few types of metal, we have folk, we have goth, we have some hip-hop, we have a ton of electronic stuff, we have rock from all over the place, we have Euro dads, we have... Dubs, I mean, it's just, it's everywhere. There's going to be opera in here. I can't wait to see how it all works together. The BPM is also all over the place, consistently changing, but actually it finds uh, pockets where it sits within a similar BPM for several sections and then transitions to something different. It's going to be interesting just to see how everything works together. I've, I'm stoked. <laughs> Let's dive into this. The track is called We're Doomed, We're Dancing by Down Up Right. Let's see what he's bringing to the table today. You thought you had 60 years. You don't. Do you get 60 months? You don't. The world is ending. Do you get 60 weeks? You do not. The world is ending. Do you get 60 days? You do not. The world is ending. You get 60 minutes. You get 60 minutes. What are you going to do with your next 60 seconds? Will you laugh? Will you cry? Will you make an undying promise to the future what little is left of it? Will you live in the past and let regret and shame hold you back? Or will you face the present with eyes and arms wide open? You get 60 seconds, 60 times. Use them wisely. Man, this takes me back to like the 2000s. It's like a really big hocket. We need more hip hop hockets. That's just this is cool. Oh, there's the reggaeton beat. Really great production so far with all three of these sections being very unique but well executed as well. Picket fences all stained with ash. 
Watching airplanes and the stock market crash. Newspaper extra says that I got a high. Oh, baby, it's hot outside. We had a century where all yeah, very the cool. colors got to be so bright. But now the future's fading back to black and white. Oh, thank you, humans and non-humans. You're too kind. <laughs> Mama's in the kitchen cooking that casserole I like one last time And I think that's just fine Do your last night go the way I do mine, mine I called Jerry, I called Doug They all wanted to sweep me down to the rug I think this is one of the first times that I felt the production, well, the punk one, just a little too clean for the styles. Even like this one, I think there's just a tad bit too much bass. I don't know that I would have this, this criticism for every genre, it's only the ones that I would know. Yeah, see? We brought this We brought this idea from the back end of the country one into this one. We didn't really get that with punk. The lounge track before it was kind of cut off by the uh, amp hum and it ended with amp hum. It, it's a very isolated moment where everything else has been uh, smoothly moved between them. We're going the synth wave though, so I'm excited. Yep, very iconic uh, drum sounds. Interesting melody on top of this though. Not something I would normally put with Synthwave, but it works well.
see the guitars are a bit too muffled. The vocals need to be sorry, the vocals need to be tucked in a little more and the guitars brought up to really embody that new metal sounds. that idea present a lot with a build-up in the third quarter to a return to form in the final quarter of each uh, each section dude I'm loving that symbol work feels like a big build-up too Panning is a nice, nice element right there. This is it's listed as 2020's pop. interesting because this uh, the noisiness of this section uh, 
uh, all the layers sort of clashing together is something I would have expected in punk and the new metal one. Not so much this one, which feels singer-songwriter. Man, this takes me back. <laughs> back to my clubbing days. Yeah, a quick moment to sort of uh, hone that in, press it down, scoop it back out. It's a perfect encapsulation of this sound. Interesting way to go into here. It says this should be R&B. That bass is just a bit too bouncing for that. I think it's a fantastic track though. Fantastic section, whatever you want to call it. Very cool mashup. It could also be the last section. I was thinking of a different era of R&B. Genres can change over time, so that's always something to uh, I need to take into consideration. That backbeat snare just made this whole section. Another really smooth transition there. the build up going. Really cool rhythmic idea on this too. Putting a bit of a polyrhythmic concept over the four on the floor. We're coming into a very cool block though that I think is going to be my favorite. <laughs> this middle quarter just has a lot of really interesting genres lined up for us.
some potential future may even include cybernetic citizens using flesh and machine. Okay. This is called Acrotech. I've never heard of that genre before. It's like, uh, like digital Marilyn Manson. Oh, this is awesome. Interesting idea. Pretty smooth transition there. This is interesting because it's progressive house, but I don't really have a strong sense of what house is other than an electronic genre. This is really interesting because this whole song could be seen as a little bit of a, a masterclass on a lot of different electronic types of music and playing them back to back in a way where you could hear the differences between them all and sort of be able to be able to understand what many of the nuances are between the subgenres. A little crash course on it. The roses dead in the mouth 
a really interesting it's a really good take on hair metal done without metal instruments unfortunately I kind of feel like the vocalist is doing a bit of a parody of hair metal vocals head like Luigi that's uh that's so obvious and yet I it's the first time I've heard it I'm not a big fan of this thing over here <laughs> this is bizarre without throwing shade this is this is kind of nightmarish I feel like there would be a really good transition there since we do have symphonic black metal and I think it's a bit of a shame that uh, the end of that track devolved into like a big rock ending instead of transitioning into this. This is a cool section on its own, but it's also a great palate cleanser. As we've had driving energy throughout every section, it's nice to have silence. and 
total chaos out here, Alan. It's all happening at once. The hurricanes, the fires, the bombs, the meteor showers. People are in the streets. They're screaming. It's a oh, man. The thing is, I'm, it says newsroom music. Valued caller, we appreciate your patience. As our call staff is back but I really wasn't expecting literal newscast thrown in there. That's uh, that's good. love how there's humor baked into some of these sections. I don't know if it's all there. I haven't really heard many of the lyrics. This section's called There's Still a Chance I Can Meet You There Someday. And I think that is such an appropriate title for the whole vibe here. It's interesting because technically this song is faster, but we're playing at halftime on the new tempo, so it feels slower. If anyone's curious, I mean, you can see up there, but we crossed the halfway point just barely. Still a lot of really interesting genres ahead of us. imaging going on with all the vocals here. There consistently is really interesting melodic ideas on top of sounds. I think that's one of my favorite parts about this uh, song so far is looking at the upcoming genres and figuring out you know, and wondering what kind of melody is going to be paired with that. For instance, this one is uh, genre is titled indie pop. But that melody line felt very Midwest emo to me, not very poppy. Infection running through 
That's got to be a real guitar over there. If not, it is a really good sound library. There's a lot of unique uh, inflections within it. Beautiful melodic phrasing too. Taking that little ornamental flare underneath all this. Very hundred gex. It's a really well done. Some more of a modern take on blues rock. I was expecting something closer to 60s, like the classic blues rock. It's good. It captures the essence, and I think that's the point of this whole project. I'll talk more on that later. We're going into the fastest, lengthiest part of the, uh, the song here. The next seven, eight minutes are all going to be at 144 plus BPMs. This is definitely at a half time though. I would not list this at 144. Yeah, that's about 70. Yeah, that's really fast for this section.
see this guitar also stands out from the chord based ones we had. I'd wager this was also a real guitar. I don't think I've heard this genre before. It's labeled as Jersey Club. It feels like uh, early internet culture. Yeah. I am noticing more and more tracks are not transitioning as smoothly as we had the first handful. Definitely catching all the production tricks that make surf rock surf rock. The haziness, the waviness, it's all present. I have, I'll save it, I'll save it. Yeah, this is solid. I could listen to a whole track of this. That was a nice transition.
Nice little introduction to a chiptune section. I just realized I was totally wrong on my tempo stuff earlier. I don't know what I was thinking. This is Down Up Right's traditional style, so I've been looking forward to this. Nice little build up here. Like that little metric shift.
Yep. A shadow of a breeze of pure reflection Reading the eulogy at my own funeral Reading, Reading the eulogy at my own funeral? Just really nailing that goth vibe everywhere. I'm getting a Big Bang Theory intro theme song vibes to this. Is this really contemporary classical? This was not what I was expecting at all given the genre name. Kind of feels more like contemporary uh, Baroque pop. This is the way the world goes where the W's come, the L's come fast and W's come slow. There is a very large amount of camp 
in, in some of these sections that I absolutely adore. Very interesting. A really big way to, to wrap this up. This is our penultimate section. That was neat. I greatly enjoyed... I enjoyed the project. I'll put it that way. I want to start with the praise. And then I'll move to the little bit of criticism I have. Um, and then we'll wrap this up. So starting with the praise, as I mentioned a couple of times, it is phenomenal just how diverse everything is in here even when we got to the end of it the final 10 sections we were still entering into genres that look like they should have been pretty close to stuff we heard earlier and weren't there's a lot of diversity here even though it pretty much resides around pop electronic and then rock metal there really isn't a lot of deviation from that. We do have folk, we have country and rock ability. They kind of uh, group up this uh, one little country side of things. Uh, we do have goth in there. We have some R&B and soul. And we do have classical and elevator and opera. <laughs> Uh, so we do have a couple of deviations from those, but a vast majority of this fit within those three categories. Is it electronic? Is it pop? Slash, see, here's the thing, right? Okay, so I'll put hip-hop in a different category, and then rock metal. So four categories here really make up a majority of this. I forgot that we did lounge music all the way back at the beginning. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, it's just, it's so diverse. There's so much going on in here. And I think the cool part is that Down Up Right gets it right. I can't speak on all 60 genres. But the ones that I recognized, even outside of my usual listening, like I know what reggaeton is. I hear that a lot, even though I don't personally listen, listen to it. I know what synth wave is. I know what vapor wave is. I know what piano, well, yeah, piano I listen to. <laughs> um, 
you know, I know it's soul is an R and B and, and dubstep. I caught on to many of these genres uh, when they started, and I think it's it's fascinating just how quickly I did catch on to them. It'd only take a bar or two, and I'm already chuckling at the juxtaposition between where we are and where we went. And I know exactly where we went just by the sounds that were utilized at the beginning of a, of a section. Down Up Right has a keen sense of what makes a genre that genre and leans into them almost instantly. Well, I mean, part of it is that there's 60 seconds. You really don't have a lot of time to work with. So you might as well get right to the meat and potatoes of things. And there's no time for intros or anything like that. You get right to the sound. But it also just does a great job at setting the stage as soon as that stage is present. Or I guess as soon as a new genre takes the stage. Ah, ah, oh, geez, that metaphor fell apart. <laughs> Uh, anyways, it's, it's just clear and concise, uh, when each genre pops up, you just, you know what it is if you're familiar enough with it. It doesn't take long to get it. Um, and that isn't something that just anybody can do. It usually takes somebody who is well-versed in a lot of styles of music to be able to pull off something like this, or at the very least, somebody who is very keen on what makes music music. You can listen to a style once or twice and pick up, oh, this is what makes it. This is the core element of this style of music. And then you can utilize that in your own music to, uh, to replicate it. And I think that comes up quite a bit in here, um, where just like the core element, what makes lounge lounge, what makes R&B R and B, and he's just like this is the core essence, and puts it into his style. And I think that's the other thing that I, I really need to focus on right here is that he puts it into his style. None of these, I don't think, are one to one exact recreations. And I need to keep that in mind, or I had to keep that in mind once I kind of figured that out around the 20th to 30th section. Because you may remember at the beginning, I, I was thinking, uh, actually I had mentioned, this doesn't quite sound like what I would expect. The production is different than the style would normally have. And that's because I don't think Down Upright is necessarily going for a perfect recreation of all of these genres, so much so as alluding to the concept of each of these while injecting his own flavor within it. And I think that's fascinating too. All of these sections that I recognized, I picked up on immediately, but there was always something in it that was a little different. And it was this idea that it's not... The rock sections weren't rock songs, but they were rock enough for me to figure out what they were. But it was all definitely down upright. And when we got to uh, his classic style, Movement 50, I had mentioned I was looking forward to this because I wanted to hear how he makes music, particularly in the production area, but also a little bit in the melodic uh, component, because those were the two sections that typically felt, um, I suppose you could say, out of place for me. And once I found, once I listened to that, that was the missing piece of the puzzle. Everything else falls into place. A lot of this is 50 to 60% the genre. The other 40 to 50% is down upright, his style, the way that he makes music, um, and basically manipulating and molding his style to fit whatever genre he's working within. This is a double-edged sword, I think. It really depends. I need to deviate for a second. There is a video a few years back uh, on YouTube, I'm pretty sure, where somebody had studied inflections and intonations and punctuation points, uh, common syllabic ideas within a bunch of different languages, and he would speak gibberish, 
in all of these various languages. Now, I only speak English, so every non-English language sounded about right to my ears. They matched the inflections, the tones, the pacings, the flow of everything. They, they sounded right. When it came to English, though, it was the most jarring thing in the world because it, it sounds right, but I can't make heads or tails of it. It certainly sounds like, well, for the American English, anyways, it sounded like an American speaking, had the right inflection, tonal changes, the right pace and ebb and flow. Many of the same punctuation points, what type of syllables get inflections and stuff like that. It's just, they weren't real words. It's bizarre. That was me listening to some of the rock and metal genres on here. And it's really interesting because when I would listen to chill pop, dubstep, UK grime, uh, was another Jersey Club. Some of the stuff I'm just not familiar with at all. I listen to it and I'm like, yeah, that sounds about right. That didn't sound off at all. And then we get to jazz or hair metal, black metal. And things just don't feel right. The, the, the the core element is there. I can tell what it's supposed to be. It just isn't. And so this song frequently had me in this flux of not knowing what something's supposed to sound like, not knowing the nuances, and it seemingly passing my check of if it sounds accurate or not, or sounding like this really bizarre idea where it's meeting most of the standards, but not, not others. Um, and like I said, it's, it's a double-edged sword because I really like the idea of experimentation, which is how I want to view this track as an experimentation on his sound. How can he push his sound to the utmost limits? How can he explore 60 genres without really getting outside of his comfort zone too far? I think that is a fantastic way of exploring one's own capabilities. Not only that, but also to expand one's own sound. A lot of artists find that they can sit within one specific sound and not really have to expand too far, maybe adjust a little bit for the changing in times um, and standards, but for the most part can continue to play their music. That is all well and good if that's what they want to do as artists. I've always been a fan of expanding what you can do, trying to take your style and expanding it, exploring new realms. Some of the best albums that you all always seem to present to me are ones where the bands pushed the envelope with their sound, did something that was new but still distinctly them. And I feel like that's what is going on here where Down Up Right isn't necessarily trying to make a masterpiece, but seeing just how far they can push their style, especially as a producer. Since they did write all of this and produce and edit all of it, it isn't just about nailing all of the sounds and seeing, oh, can I you know, make a rock track with this library that I really like? Um, but it's also about getting the production right on all of them and producing something that sounds congruent. It's this experimentation that I, I'm really fond of within this track. Speaking about congruent production, this is another double-edged sword. I feel like all 60 of these sections tend to work well together. Nothing really stands out as being an oddball against anything else. Everything works together within this giant project. What that means is that there must be a homogeneity of sound, which 60 genres are not going to sound the same. And I don't mean that from a compositional standpoint, I mean that from a production standpoint. And so we end up having a unification of production in that almost all of these sections feature an emphasis on low end, on bassiness, 
uh, the bass tone typically sounds similar-ish throughout. It is almost always some sort of synthesizer uh, with a very wide, flat tone. It uh, allows a, a really big, resonant low end, which is great for dancing to. It's a very electronic, bassy sound that we get in here that I don't think fits every single genre, but does fit the idea of crafting a single song. This song, this album, whatever this project, whatever you want to call it, could very well have ended up feeling like channel surfing. And while it certainly does at times due to harsher transitions, it doesn't always. And even when we have a harsh transition, it sometimes even feels natural to change between ideas like that because there is some concept that gets carried over and the production does a lot of weight in this category. The downside to that though is that some of these sections just don't feel quite right. Some of the rock and, and metal sections, the guitars just don't sound like guitars. There were a couple of tracks where I pointed out that's probably a real guitar. And that's because there's a specific quality to it that uh, D, uh, dis, uh, it crafts a distinction between it and a, th a synthesizer that has been digitized, uh, sorry, <laughs> that has been compressed and distorted. I will say that a lot of the guitar work that's done by synthesizers on this song is pretty good. It's like 85%, 90% the right character. As far as taking his style and pushing it into the realm of metal, I'd say that for the most part, he did a fantastic job at taking probably a an electronic-oriented library and pushing it into the realms of these sounds. But as somebody who's familiar with it, it's those nuances, those little tiny details that are going to be like, mm, that's not quite right. But it is important to keeping that synergy between all the different sections. So like I said, double-edged sword, it, it supports the track one way, it doesn't support every section another way. And uh, I'm kind of curious if people who are more familiar with some of the electronic stuff or maybe the pop stuff, or maybe the hip hop stuff, listen to this and kind of have that same feeling that I do with a lot of the rock and metal sections where I'm like, yeah, that's pretty close, but you know, there's, there's some distinctions in here that aren't quite working. Um, just like if you had watched that uh, language video and maybe you understand French or Italian or Greek or Indian, whatever, you know, the dude went through like 40 languages or something you had an inverse feeling where the English part felt, yeah, pretty close. That's what English sounds like to my ears. And then it comes to your native language and you're like, well, oh, geez, that's, it's this weird friction where like, it sounds right, but those aren't words. Uh, and, and maybe people who come to this from an electronic side, they hear agrotech and, and uh, pure techno and future pop. And they're like, this is really close, but there's you know, a little, some nuances that aren't quite picked up on. If so, if that does sort of happen across the board, like I said, it's, I think it was probably a calculated decision because you either make something that's going to feel, allow each genre to feel super distinct, which makes a song feel disjointed, or you enable the song to feel synergized, which removes some of that distinction from the genres, which is going to pull out some of those nuances. Um... So yeah, like I said, um, I, I, I'd mentioned that was going to be a bit of a criticism, but it ended up being multifaceted, I suppose. There is no right answer, I think, for it. And uh, what Down Up Right ended up doing is probably the best decision for it. There are certainly some sections where I feel like it falls apart quite a bit more than anything else. Hair metal, hair metal is a rough section. <laughs> got the spirit right <laughs> um, but it, it just it never quite clicked for me black metal was interesting I said it was uh, the stuff of nightmares I didn't want to throw shade I think you did a phenomenal job on it but I'm not a big black metal fan I get subjected to the real stuff a lot and having the black metal idea presented with distorted synthesizer stuff 
is wild. <laughs> I'll just I'll just put it at that. Um, uh, what was another thing that I wanted to bring up? I think it was a specific section I wanted to talk about. I could have used a little bit more jazz in the jazzy section. But again, I the more I think about it, the genres I don't think are specifically saying this is a jazz section. More so as jazz was my inspiration for this section and kind of picking and choosing the elements of the genre that wants, that uh, he wanted to incorporate with his style in order to craft that section. So again, it's just depends on how strict you want to see these uh, individual genres. I think part of what did it was just how clear everything was at the beginning. The crunk rap, the reggaeton, the rap pack, or what I call lounge music, all of that worked exceptionally well. And so it kind of put me in a mindset of, oh, we're, you know, 100% just copy pasting sounds over here. Punk, I think, was the first one that was a little bit rough. But then we went into minimalistic pop, synth wave, even the new metal section I thought was done well, although that was one of the first times I noticed the synth guitars, so... I think the last thing I want to say, I'm surprised that for a project like this, with so many electronic sections, including dubstep, that none of the transitions were handled as a drop. You build up the intensity, you bring all the energy up, you keep adding layers, you increase the, uh, you know, from quarter notes, eighth notes, sixteenth notes, thirty-second notes, and then a big sound, a beat or two beats of silence, and then the next style of music. I think this particularly would have worked with a stylistic change within that electronic genre, shifting from, say, dubstep to house or something, um, because you're kind of expecting more electronic music after that anyways, but even coming into something like the black metal, I think would have been okay as an explosive sound coming out of the drop. Uh, it seems like an obvious idea to me, and it just didn't show up at all. Um, although, speaking of obvious, there's that one line in here, uh, wearing an L on your head, like your Luigi or something like that. It's just like, yeah, dude, that is a very obvious uh, uh, diss and just like how have I never heard of it? I've never heard it before. It's not even just you know me thinking it up. How have I never heard that line before? So uh, yeah, I mean sometimes the most obvious things escape us, especially as artists when you're so close to something. I can't imagine how long this took. Sixty minutes of music is that is a big undertaking. That's a lot of hours sitting at the computer, listening to this, thinking about what to do next. Uh, it's very easy to let some, in hindsight, obvious ideas not uh, not make it in. And I think that was one that I would have really liked to see. Um, oh, and I guess just one final note is that I like how this isn't super serious. There is an element to it where... It's certainly, I want to do this, right? I, I want to have all these genres. I want them faithfully-ish represented. There's a lot of seriousness to the creation process, but the end result is not very serious. And there's an hour left to live. We're going to dance and listen to a lot of different music. Like, that's that's kind of fun. <laughs> that's not really serious at all. Um, but also, a lot of the lines that I did pick up on had a nice fun vibe to them uh, and there were moments that almost seemed self-aware about what this project is and everything about it that uh, I think worked really well also in particular I love the decision to go with the newsroom elevator thing I thought that was phenomenal very left field very wild uh, there was something in here that went very campy and I don't remember what it was oh the goth bit I don't think that was what I was talking about, but uh, yeah, the goth section was just pure camp bliss. The delivery of the lines, the lines <laughs> themselves, um, just very good at at kind of poking a little fun at goth while also being a bit serious about it. 
like I said, every genre here, I don't think any of them are really done to a point of parody. There is a respect done to everything, except hair metal. I still feel like hair metal went just a bit too far into parody. I don't know if that was the music, uh, the vocals... The vocals at the end certainly didn't help. I thought they were okay at the beginning. Um, but yeah, just everything. There, there was a sense of respect for pretty much every section here. Um, but having a little bit of fun poked at goth, I think, worked really well. And maybe for all I know, the lyrics poked fun at all the genres. And of course, I'm just not familiar enough with them to notice. Um, I think that's all my thoughts here. Just in, I mean, this is impressive. It really is. I would love to do something like this, but I highly doubt I would get anywhere near as accomplished with it, particularly in the areas that I'm less understanding of. I think I could probably do this with classical. I do wish classical was present a little more. I think the opera section was fine. I was expecting something totally different for contemporary classical, though. But I could do classical, jazz, uh, rocks, and metals. But if I were to incorporate any pop or hip hop or uh, electronic music, I think I'd be way out of my depth. And so I'm just, I'm kind of in awe that this works as well as it does and is as effective as it is and that all the sections are as clear as they are. Uh, Down Upright, just fantastic job. You should definitely give yourself a pat on the back for this. Like I mentioned earlier, I can't imagine how long this took, not just the writing process, but also I'm sure some research uh, time as well to figure out what some of these genres do, what, what you're aiming to recreate within them. Those are my thoughts. We're doomed. We're dancing. I down upright. What did you think of this? Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything you'd like to add on to what I said or correct me on? You can even just give me your general thoughts, opinions, and perspectives, all that stuff. Put, throw it down into the comments section. Above the comments in the description box, you'll find a link to Linktree. It takes you here. You can find links to my music, ways to support the channel, a link to the Discord server, and so much more. Above that, if you could, like, subscribe, and ring the bell. I greatly appreciate all three of those. All right, that wraps it up for this one. I'll be back tomorrow. We're going to finish out our theme of, what are we doing? Oh, yeah, uh, unexpected vocals. Songs with vocal styles you just wouldn't expect, which this was the opposite of. Most of the vocal styles fit the genres perfectly. Just another attention to detail that worked really well. Uh, that'll be at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, 9 p.m. UTC. Until next time, remember to be critical, not cynical, of the music you listen to and have a fantastic morning, afternoon, or evening whenever you choose to watch my videos. Mm -hmm.